So OpenAI had their big dev day on Monday. And in this video, I'm just going to try and give you all of the important points quick and easy so that you can understand exactly what this could mean for you and your business. And it doesn't matter if you're a developer or not. There is some incredible stuff that was announced in this big conference. So let's start getting through it right now. And we'll go through the first big sort of update, which is GPT-4 Turbo is here and it hasn't actually arrived within our chat gpt account yet or my one at least but it's being rolled out apparently very very soon and along with that there's the ability to use all of the features such as these here these uh like the browse with bing the advanced data analysis plugins and that all within just the one chat GPT-4 Turbo. So no more switching from one thing to the other, which you probably have already realized can be quite annoying sometime if you, if you use chat GPT. And so the GPT-4 Turbo is now available in the API. So it's supposed to be more intelligent. It's supposed to be faster than GPT-4. And um, it has the ability to use all of those things in the one place. This is also huge. It can now take in a huge amount of data in one go. We're talking like 300 page PDF, for example, can now be imported and GPT-4 Turbo will be able to cope with it, but also apparently do a better job than what GPT-4 could have done as well. So that's a, a huge issue for a lot of people is not being able to upload big documents and have it analyzed. Claude, which is by Anthropic, was able to do quite a bit. I think it was from memory 64,000 tokens, but not as much as this. So this is a massive update for everyone anyway. And it's more than 50% cheaper than GPT-4. So they've managed to program it and trim and streamline it to be even more efficient. So it costs less. The April the 2023 20, is now the cutoff date. So previous to that, it was September 2021. 20, uh, Sam Altman also said that it frustrated them as much as it did uh, chat GPT users like ourselves, which was good to know that it bugs them too. So hopefully they're going to bring it up to date. That is their goal is to bring it right up to date. Now, obviously, we have the chance to go online using the browse with Bing and get current information. But as a whole, the chat GPT database did not have knowledge, uh, you know, after September 21. So now getting there, April 23, this video has been done in November. So we're not too far behind. Next up is the improved performance from GPT-4. It is a lot faster, as I say. So that is fantastic. Hence the name Turbo. If you remember, we had GPT-3.5 and then that went to Turbo as well. Uh, it can provide images alongside your text input prompt via the API. So that is uh, pretty amazing. And then there's a new JSON mode that forces GPT to respond in pure JSON. Now, I'm not a developer, but I understand that that is a really useful addition. So there you go. That, so th those are the GPT-4 Turbo things that came out. So GPT-4 Turbo is going to be fantastic. And I guess at some point the next update will probably be GPT-5. Now, another huge announcement. This one is more appropriate and more interesting for just normal people and not developers, because you're going to be able to develop your own GPT apps for use within ChatGPT using uh, their GPT builder. And you can build your own custom GPT that is uh, designed to do one specific thing. And, you know, that could be like helping you become a better writer or helping you with SEO or any of that stuff. So that's going to be amazing. And I suppose the biggest thing is, is that you're going to be able to uh, have this in an app store. So there's going to be a GPT app store that you can sell these apps in. Um, and so you don't even need to use coding now to make this. You can literally, um, Sam Altman did a demo where you literally just talk and say, right, I want to build my uh, GPT app to do this, this and this. And it starts building on the right hand side of the window and you can actually see it being done. And then once it's ready, you can just put it into the app store and other people can use it if you want to do that. 
Uh, and then enterprises are big companies. They can make their own organization, uh, specific custom GPTs that aren't available in the marketplace and use it within their own company. And to begin with, they're giving us two uh, custom GPTs kind of ready to go within uh, ChatGPT. And that will be with Canva and Zapier. So uh, two very powerful uh, custom GPTs there. They gave a quick demo of the Canva one and it was sort of being used to create uh, slides using Canva. But to be honest with you, I'd still use just Canva over that. Uh, you'll see why when you see the demo. And I'm going to put a link to the full presentation underneath, but we're getting through this pretty quick and this will save you a lot of time than watching the hour presentation. So the GPT store, this is a huge thing. This is a great way for people who want to make money with chat GPT. You actually now can by creating really useful custom uh, chat GPTs that you can sell in their app store. But the, the interesting thing is, is that they are going to provide like some sort of revenue share program. I guess like anyone like an uh, Apple app store and so on, you know, you do a share of the revenue or Google Android. But it didn't, re didn't really say like everybody. So we don't know how much money each sale will get and how much they'll take from it. And also we don't know if everyone's going to get it because the way he phrased it was, um, I think where authors receive of popular of popular uh, GPTs will earn a revenue share, the most used. So it's he was sort of insinuating in my mind that not everyone's going to be able to get a revenue share, only the very best apps, which may be a way of just stopping people uploading loads of rubbish, basically. Then we've got the assistance API. So this is where you can kind of create, again, almost like a custom GPT, but via the API that's designed to do all kinds of different tasks. And you can even use Code Interpreter, uh, which is amazing within that. And Dali, uh, so also incredible. They gave a great demo of this in the presentation, which uh, is worth watching, where they kind of created a travel advisor. Um, which was very, very clever. And and we're getting very close to that AGI, you know, that, that a system where you can create agents to do specific tasks using um, artificial intelligence. So they're doing a really good job of kind of building this at the moment. I'm going to show you in a second what one, you know, looks like. Uh, there's three tools that you can use, Code Interpreter, Retrieval, which is where it goes and accesses custom knowledge that you upload to it, and then function calling as well. So it can then go and do other things offline or sorry, online, uh, which is pretty crazy. And I had a little go with it and um, I'll show you in just a second. But just like with a normal API, you can specify its role via a custom instruction as well. And here it is in Playground. And I had a little play with it in Playground and look what I was able to do. So I created an assistant that is using the latest version of GPT-4. And then what I wanted it to do is I created a weather assistant and I put, tell me the weather in an upbeat and fun way for the location of London, England. That's kind of its instruction. And then the function is to get the weather. Um, I've also enabled code interpreters so that it can create charts and things with the information that it pulls in. And then um, retrieval there. We don't need that at the moment because I haven't uploaded any additional information. But if I wanted to, I could upload more files for it to use to create its answers. And then I typed in like, what's the weather today? Here we go. And then I had to submit true. And then it's done. Uh, hold on for just a moment while I check the current weather for London, England. It feels like peering into a weather crystal ball. Oh, so magical. So it's kind of, in, you know, inserted that upbeat, fun way of doing things, given the weather report, which is really cool. But then I asked it to create a weather chart for the next five days, which it was able to do. And so... There you go. Look at that. Now I've said, can you rebuild it using a bar chart? Because it's just clearer and easier. And again, it's given that weather report underneath. Uh, voila, our weather symphony now takes the stage as a bar chart with a harmonious medley of temperatures. So crazy stuff. You can build all sorts of things. If you're a developer at the moment, you just, you're just going to be so busy. You, there's so many things you can build now. And even if you're not, then you can build GPTs. So uh, there's so much opportunity has been created 
by this uh, this open AI. It's crazy. Now, if you're into open AI and you're into ChatGPT, you're going to love my free group, by the way. Come and join. There's a link underneath this video. Uh, ChatGPT users, we've got over 8,000 members now. And we're all talking about AI and, uh, you know, just about everything to do with artificial intelligence, open AI, ChatGPT, Claude, you name it. So come and join. It's free. Um, love to have you there. Now, getting back to other things that were released in the open um, AI dev day. Whisper text to speech. Um, they've released the TTS1 and TTS1 HD models. The TTS1 model is optimized for speed and TTS1 HD is for the quality. And they gave some demos of how good this text-to-speech engine is now. You can choose uh, from one out of the six voice types and then you can create a realistic sounding human speech from the API. And I'm going to do another video on some of the uh, some things that developers have already created just playing around with this uh, new features that you have with the API now with OpenAI. And some of the things are incredible. I'm going to go and show you that in another video, like I say. But they're, they're, it's mind blowing now what you can create using this technology, I can assure you. Uh, other cool stuff that was announced as well. Uh, so Dali E is available in the API. That means you can upload images or create images using Dali based on text prompts and whatever else you want to do. Uh, Code Interpreter is also now available in the API. So that's very, very useful for analyzing data, creating charts, as you just saw in the uh, playground there. And then GPT 3.5 and 4 costs have all been reduced in an effort, again, to sort of help developers and encourage developers to start creating and using those two technologies. But for me, out of all of the things that were said in that dev day, amazing as they were, there was just one thing that Sam Altman said, which really got me excited. And it probably um, slipped past a lot of people because a lot of people would have switched off once he'd finished doing the main presentation. But the thing that he said was this. We hope you'll come back next year. What we launched today is going to look very quaint relative to what we're busy creating for you now. So I have no idea what mind melting stuff he is going to be announcing next year. But this was crazy enough. So I think we can all see that artificial intelligence has gone ballistic at the moment. It's just taken another huge upturn. And if you found this interesting and useful, please do hit that like button. Let YouTube know. And I'll also do some more videos on how you can start using this incredible uh, new technology that's available to us in business and in life. And once again, don't forget to join the free group here with uh, over 8,000 members. It's completely free. Come and join in and we can all talk about, uh, you know, AI and ChatGPT till our heart's content. Thanks very much for watching this video and I'll see you in another one real soon.